Hello again. This is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. And this is video 3E, quantifying the friction force. Now we've already determined uh, that we know the direction of the friction force. It will tend to oppose motion or impending motion. Uh, now we're going to look at how to calculate the magnitude of the friction force. So the magnitude effectively depends on two quantities. Uh, how rough the surfaces are and how hard they are pushed together. Uh, when we say surfaces, we mean the region of contact between the object in question and the supporting surface. So we have a picture here of a, of a crate on the floor and um, so we're going to push this crate to the right when we look at the point of contact, the region of contact between the crate and the floor, there are microscopic irregularities in each of them. So the yellow up here is the box and then this is the floor. And those irregularities sort of butt up against each other and uh, resist the uh, relative motion. So the box wants to move to the right. This floor is going to um, oppose it and these little points of contact are going to provide a force in the opposite direction FF. So again we're aware of that. How rough the surface is is um, obviously is going to impact the magnitude of this friction force. We have a way to quantify that that we'll look at shortly. Now the formula is as follows. The magnitude of the friction force <clears throat> is less than or equal to mu times Fn. So on your formula sheet, it looks this way. You've got absolute value symbols and vector symbols. Uh, the reason they're using absolute value, as we'll see, uh, is because this is not a vector equation. Uh, we know that the directions are not the same. Uh, we know that the direction of Fn is perpendicular to the surface and outward, and the direction of Ff is opposing the motion parallel to the surface. Um, so the formula only applies to the magnitudes of the forces. So in the formula, FF is the magnitude of the friction force. Fn is the normal force. We're familiar with that already. Uh, the symbol mu here is a Greek lowercase m. Uh, it's also called the coefficient of friction. This uh, mu is a pure number. It has no units at all. Uh, it's typically between 0 and 1. It is possible to have a coefficient of friction greater than one, but we won't deal with it. Um, you will not have a coefficient of friction less than zero. Um, the lowest we will deal with would be uh, a mu of zero. Uh, this would indicate a frictionless surface. Um, technically, no such surface ex exists, uh, but we can model it that way. Um, we can say that the mu is so low that we can ignore it. Um, so the extremes here, zero, would indicate a frictionless surface, and one would indicate a very, very rough surface. We will typically be in between somewhere. Now, we want to look at this formula a little more closely because the less than or equal to symbol probably requires a little bit of explanation. Um, on the right side, mu times Fn this would indicate the maximum friction force that's available given an Fn and a, and a mu in the surface. Um, the friction force can't be more than that. It can be less, though, particularly if the object in question is not moving. So if the object remains at rest, the friction force will only push as hard as it needs to in order to keep the object from moving. Um, we will demonstrate this in class, but let's say we have a box sitting on the floor and I'm going to push on it sideways on a horizontal applied force of 20 newtons. Let's say for the sake of argument that mu times Fn or the maximum friction force is 50 newtons. Um, if I'm only pushing with 20, uh, that's not going to be enough force to overcome 
the maximum friction force. So the box is going to remain stationary, it's not going to move, and the friction force is going to be equal to my 20 Newton applied force to keep the box from moving. So the friction is going to balance out my applied force because I'm not pushing hard enough to overcome friction. Okay. Now if the object is actually moving, you can assume that the friction force is the maximum. So we've reached the maximum friction force and that's all it can push with. So FF equals mu times FN. Okay, short one. Um, typically you will need to determine the magnitude of the normal force before you can determine the magnitude of the friction force. We'll get to that when we solve some problems coming up next. All right, so again, this is a short one. Um, until next time, enjoy. I'll see you again soon.